love great podcasts? Do you love great Australian podcasts? Of course you do. Australians make incredible podcasts. And if you want to stay up to date with the best Australian shows, then check out Oz Podcasts. Look for us on social media and find your new favorite show from the Australian podcast directory on ozpodcast.com.au. That's O-Z-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, ozpodcast.com.au. Check it out. If you like you stuff before anybody else, if you like to keep your finger on the pulse, if you like the future and want to be in it, keep on listening because we'll start in a minute. Tech webcast The hosts and guests are unsurpassed Tech webcast Cause technology moves so fast Tech webcast Stick around and you're gonna have a blast Yeah Tech, 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 tech webcast ha, ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast Let's go! Welcome to episode 314 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 15th of November 2014. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday at midday Melbourne time. Please write us on iTunes and like us at facebook.com forward slash techwebcast. Follow us on Twitter at techwebcast. Your hosts today are Brad, Jennifer, Steve, and myself, Andrew. And our co-hosts today are show favourites, Mike Elgin and Paul Kerry. Our very special guests are Mike Boucher and Samantha from Afford Productions all the way over in Brooklyn, New York. How you doing there, Brad? How you going, Andrew? How's your week been, mate? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Pretty good. A lot happening at the moment in my little world. So it's, uh, yeah, really, really busy from business and also with young Miles, he's starting to roll over. Oh, and nice. Forward and backward and stuff. So yeah, it's 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 been busy. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. And then he want to report on any? Oh, not really. Just uh, working on a number of things. So probably in the next couple of weeks, I'll have might have a bit of news depending All on right. how things move along. But yeah, just keeping busy. Sounds good, mate. Sounds good. Okay, let's go, Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Welcome. How's your week been? Hi, my week has been fantastic. How about you? Good. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Yep. Good, good. Yep. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I was at an event yesterday for work called the Geek Fest, and you know I was in heaven, right? Oh, wow. Because it was, yeah, just tech galore. It was a lot of fun. So, any favorite uh, gadgets yeah. caught your eye, Jen? Anything? Gosh, you know, uh, there there were a lot of like man-made type things, like this cool robot that somebody made there that was really cool. But no, I didn't see anything in particular that re- really stood out, but the robot was really neat. So oh, nice one. Um, yeah, nice one. a lot of fun stuff. Uh, a couple of shout outs uh, before we get to the next person. A shout out to your mum, Jennifer. Oh yeah, shout out to my mum, yeah, Suzanne. Yep. Suzanne, yep. And also uh, to Dan McDermott as well. He's a huge supporter of this podcast as well. He's been uh, hey, following uh, us on Twitter and sharing the tech webcast and stuff each week and that sort of thing. Nice. Uh, yeah, great stuff. Uh, also, we have got Jacob on. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you, Brad. And uh, how's your week been, mate? Pretty good. I got me a new, new toy. Oh, I'll did. talk about that in a few minutes. You didn't do that. That's from uh, Kickstarter. Yes, it is. Yep, can't wait to hear about that. Also, we've got Paul Carry on. Welcome, Paul. How's your week been, mate? Oh, good, Brad. Um, obviously, I've also picked up a new toy, which oh, is yeah, the um, LG G Watch R. Oh, yeah. Uh, so another smartwatch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have. How many watches do you have now, mate, on your wrist? Uh, on my wrist? Yeah. At the same time? On my wrist. <laughs> You Did you have... actually get to use all the technology you buy, Paul? You seem to be like racking up a whole bunch of stuff lately. Yeah, that's what I can't wear. <laughs> <laughs> I get through it. <laughs> Eventually, I'll get to it. Um, and then, of course, there's the craziness of G20 around <laughs> this week as well. Yeah. It was, um, especially yesterday. Uh-huh. That was horrible when they closed down the entire city and you couldn't actually get to the Gold Coast from the north side. <laughs> So that was um, horrific. Anyway, um, also the yeah, that was pretty much my week so far. Yeah. Um, it's only the beginning of the week for me, uh, weekend I mean. So um, should be right. Good stuff, man. How's your new iPad Air two going? Uh, it's working. Good. Is it airy? Um, okay. Is it light? 
<laughs> Does <Yes>. it float? Why does not previous? <laughs> All right, good stuff. Um, Steve, welcome. How how's your week been, Steve? Oh, it's been a great week. Um, and today, um, got to go to the um, South Texas. Uh, I got so many organizations. South Texas Underground Film Festival. Uh, my first time being there. It was awesome. Uh, of course, I've some people I already know over there, and it's kind of cool because when you see after you see the movie, you can actually talk with the actors and, and directors uh, of of their movie. And I made a comment, and you know, I like this certain actress, and she was behind me. She goes, "Thanks." I'm like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> so she was actually there. So. Uh, it was a great time uh, wow. today. Good stuff, Steve. Good stuff. Uh, also, we got Mike Algren on. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. How are you doing? Good, mate. How's your week been and what have you been up to? It's been crazy. Uh, as you know, I, I host a uh, daily podcast. And in addition to that, I am getting ready to record a podcast that we're, gonna, we're going to play over the Christmas holiday. Nice one. So it's like just super, super busy just getting ready for all that stuff, booking guests, doing all that kind of stuff. Good stuff, mate. Sounds good. Sounds good. You know what that's like. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I oh, know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mate. It's yeah, very easy. <laughs> so many people want to be on, and yeah, good, good fun. Yep. Good fun. Uh, i got uh, Mark on. Welcome, Mark. Hey, how are you? I'm good, mate. How, how are you? We're doing good. Uh, this week we've been we've been working a whole ton, getting ready for our latest feature film, and um, we've been hiking a lot too. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Tell us about the uh, yeah. the film. Uh, well, the film is called Candy Apple, and um, it's a dark comedy. We actually shot it in May, and it's um, it's in its final stages right now. We're doing a um, a preview of it in uh, in early December, but basically the plot of it is it's a it's a dark comedy about a father and son who are uh, consumed by New York's undercurrents uh, of like uh, vice and desperation. So it's a pretty like it's pretty gritty film. Wow. Okay. All right, uh, Andrew, do you want to go to the guest or the news first, man? Or no, we'll we'll run through and. Um... Yeah, yeah, keep having a chat. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mark. Which is, is really interesting, actually, about that film, Mark and Samantha. Uh, how, how long did it take you guys to actually film that? Uh, it took us about, I'd say, I think it was 21, 21 days. 20, yeah, about 21 days. Okay, all right. And you know Jody Rains, uh, Mark? Uh, actually, Samantha does. Oh, Samantha does, okay. Yes. Okay. How do, yeah, I, I how do you know Jody? On a film that I worked on. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good stuff. And what sort of equipment do you use, Mark, for your films and that sort of thing? Um, it really depends. Like, I come from a lighting background, so we use all kinds of lights. <laughs> like, you know, we could use twenty thousand watt lights or wow. um, dollies. Um, a new a new necessity on set is like digital cameras as opposed to film, so they have like Red Epic and Ari Alexa. And, <clears throat> Uh, all of these, uh, um, yeah, all of these like really neat gadgets. Um, but the uh, the Alexa is the favorite, and we plan on purchasing one pretty soon um, as an investment to the company. Oh, nice one. Okay, Steve, any questions? Uh, actually, yeah. Um, the what was the name of the camera again? Alexia. It was uh, Ari Alexa. Yes. Um, isn't that like some type of new type of camera? Is it like open source or is it? Um I've actually heard, I think I've heard of it before, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's totally different than, I think, from some of the other type of cameras out there. Well, what's a, what's unique about that particular uh, yeah, camera? From what I, um, for me, the so the brand Ari has been around forever. They make lights and they used to make film and film, um, film stock and all sorts of things. But... Um, I, I like them a lot because they one they're a trusted brand and two they have there's like there's a lot of different aspects that go into buying a camera such as like dynamic range which is basically how how much it can open up to light and um, there's also how it handles the colors in the camera so there are many things that uh, differentiate it I think as opposed to like the Red Epic which is in my opinion, more of like a special effects camera and more about resolution, whereas the Ari Alexa is more about color and definition. Hmm. 
And uh, so you can make these adjustments in camera. Uh, is that fairly easy or is it kind of a um, little bit hard while you're shooting? Um, if, if, if the guys know their equipment, um, it could be fairly simple. However, like with, uh, with the updates and technology and how it's moving so quickly, it's a lot easier to do things in post-production as well. Yeah. So you always have a question um, if, if you, per se, like don't get it done on set, um, you always have a cushion post-production. Okay. All right. Good question, Steve. Uh, Paul, so you guys spend a lot of time be behind the camera. Um, do you spend any time in front of the camera as well? Um, I'm, yeah, briefly, um, I got cast into it. We sh shot a, I was working on a film called Kid Witness and, uh, it was, uh, featured Susan Sarandon. So we got to play a small part in, in that one. Um, it was fun. It's very interesting. I, uh, I haven't ever, no, I don't think I've ever been featured in front of the camera. Okay. Uh, yeah. I guess it gives you an appreciation of the other aspect as well from <laughs> from the, the talent side. <laughs> uh, okay, Jennifer, do you have any, have any questions for the guys? Yeah, when, when did you get started with us? When did you start Aphid Productions? Um, Aphid started probably, I'd say, about five years ago. Um, I'm from Texas, and I started this company up. Uh, we started shooting music videos and uh, little commercials there. And because I also work for a, a TV station in Texas, it was fairly easy for me to get um, anything on air over there. And so um, then I ended up moving to New York and starting the company, extending the company over here. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been about five years and going. Wow, that's pretty good. So how how many other productions do you have under your belt? Um, I've got, me, I have at, at least 30 to 40. Whoa. Yeah. It, and then Mark yeah. has a few as well. <laughs> yeah, I have probably about the same. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite, or is it always like the latest one you're working on is your, is your baby, or is there one that really stands out? We like edgy stuff. Um, we're, our target, um, we mostly cater to commercials. So, um, you know, bigger clients like uh, Estee Lauder and Louis Vuitton, like people who are trying to advertise and sell merchandise. Um, but right. we also, we'd, lo we'd love films that have an edge to them or, or a quirkiness or something that just stands out. So uh, Candy Apple was one of those. And, and we have another one, um, which is Arnold Goldstein. So we do also cater to, to those kind of niche stories. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And is Candy, can we watch, can we view Candy Apple now? Is that ready to be viewed? Uh, currently it's not. It's in a rough cut, which uh, basically means it's like it's it's been edited all the way through. But um, basically we're doing a test review in early December um, and get feedback from the crew and, and some of our friends just to see what can be improved. And um, mm -hmm. and then we'll go back into the cutting room with it, and then we'll cut it up some more, and then hopefully from there it'll be the final product of which we will take it out to festivals and play the festival circuit, and then eventually go into independent uh, independent distribution. Gotcha, gotcha. So with independent good. distribution, is that uh, a DVD, or, or are you looking at doing online sort of um, streaming distribution, or? Uh, it could be it could be anything like it could be theatrical distribution, um, of which usually follows DVD distribution. Um, these days, also it could be syndication, which is like something like Netflix or Amazon Instant um, or Crackle stuff like that. Um, we haven't really sat down and decided what would be the best for the film. We're definitely going to play the festival circuit because we think it has a really um, indie feel and it can it can do well there. And, uh, All right, uh, Jacob. Any questions for for for, for Mark? No, nope, because they've been pretty much answered already. Uh, okay. What about you, Mark? Any questions? 
Maybe not. Paul, what about you? Any questions? Uh, yeah, so um, what's the ultimate goal? Are you actually wanting to go into certain like movie production or your own type of film production of any kind? Um, I would say the ultimate goal would be just um, to keep attaining bigger budgets. It, that's what usually comes along with with um, with time and experience as what we're doing. Um, commercials are big budgets, which are which are very nice. But even feature films, like right now, we've been working with feature films in like the half million dollar budget range. But to eventually work our way up to to um, a couple million dollars, and then say um, those films that already have the distribution, like say like a film like Interstellar that just came out. Um, you know, just bigger films like that. We want to keep working our way up. Cool. So with that um, budget, you said you've sort of about a half a million dollars. Is that something that um, organizations sort of sponsor to help uh, the industry grow and help um, talented people come through? Or, or is that something where you guys actually uh, see a positive revenue coming back from the film? Um, it could go... It could go either way. It really depends on the film. Um, but most of the time, I would say with independent film, it's it's such a a wide medium, or wide medium that doesn't make sense. Uh, like a wide platform now that like there's so many independent films being produced. There's so many trying to get distribution that it could be hard to see um, a return. But there's a uh, it's always possible. So I've had a look at candyapplethemovie.com. I had a look before you guys came on. Some of the, the images on there are really, I guess, confronting. It, it, it is quite, you said at the start of the, <laughs> the show, it, it's, it's a very in-your-face kind of film. Is that something, I mean, does it have a rating? Is that something that you actually consider when you're, you're creating this, the boundaries and the borders, or do you just do it from an artistic perspective of this is what's in our head and this is how we're going to drive it? Um, we see it, we kind of see it as both, but in the end we really like to let our, our you know, the creativity take over. Um, there are There are times where you could have your moment of doubt and saying like, is this too edgy? But like, we had a great director, um, his name is Dean Dempsey, he's an international artist. And, and um, he he really had a thorough vision of it and what, what he wanted it to be. And he was just so confident in the film the entire time that whenever we even brought questions up to him, he would always reassure us. So even if we did take a step back and say like, hey, like as long as you have a good team on your side, like you should definitely feel very confident in the outcome. Um, so what about the movie that, that Jody was in, uh, Mark? What was that movie called that she was an extra for? Um, that movie was called Searching Hope Spring. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yep. Yes, and um, that was it. Was actually it was a trailer. Um, they were shooting a teaser for for an, a feature film. It's this. It's for another company that we work with. Uh, it's uh, B B C Studios, B N C Studios. Um, so we've worked we've worked with them a few times before, and and they've been really great. So, so we've we've met Jody through through them. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Uh, Mark, you there, mate? Yeah. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I'm here. Any questions for Mark at all? Um, yeah. So, um. You guys said you've done a number of films. What kind of reviews have you had for those? I mean, I'm sure you've had a a mixed bag per se. Is there any particular ones that have stood out, whether they're you know constructive, negative, or positive? And what general you know things come from that? As in, um, you know, what do people say about the way that you guys create film content? It um, it's like it's a really dependent industry, and it's like anything else. It's hard to cater to everyone's needs. Um, we we did a, a coming of age story, and and we thought that it was going to be really good, and we and it did. The final product was great. We loved it, and uh, we thought it was going to get rave reviews, and it ended up not getting the best reviews. But um, 
also there were many positive reviews to back that up. So it's always it's always a mixed bag, and I come to uh, see that even with other films. Like, it's just it's hard to please everyone. So everyone sees the flaws, but um, I can't really think of anything in particular where where anybody has. And when you get those negative or constructive reviews, does that do you find that has an impact on um, you know people watching it and whether the film does well or sells well? I feel I feel that it could definitely have have an impact, um, especially dependent on who it is. If it's like uh, Roger Ebert, somebody like that. Um, luckily, we haven't had any negative reviews from somebody with that kind of influence. But um, yeah, it could definitely definitely affect you. As far as a uh, consumer standpoint, I don't really, in my opinion, I don't really think so. I like I always like to watch films for myself and see for myself no matter what anybody says and I know a lot of people in our industry are that way as well well actually so am I because I've seen plenty of movies that where the reviews said they weren't that great but I I loved it so yeah consumer perspective I think is uh, just as important than you know some of the experts I've seen the experts say it's a great movie and I didn't necessarily like it so it's really dependent on the type of audience you're going for in, in many things thrown in um mark do you watch many australian movies at all what's your favorite movie at the moment you like watching you watch many australian stuff or australian movies or i've seen um candy, candy. Um, oh yeah good movie candy. yes yeah good movie yeah good movie. fantastic it film with Heath Ledger. yeah and um and with Heath Ledger, yeah and Courtney's um way back way back movie. a couple of years ago i watched uh the black balloon Oh yeah, yep. Good movie. And uh, I really like that one, The Black Balloon. Check check out the movie The Castle. Yeah, the check Castle. The Castle. The Castle. It's on Netflix, and also Two Hands. That's a good movie too. That sounds good. The Castle. Yeah, okay, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. So have you got any uh, after this project? Have you got anything else that you guys have got in the works? Or I mean, is it something where, as you're building this project, the next one is already being developed and getting ready to go in place? Oh yes, it's always a it's a constant grind. Um, right now we are we're in pre-production for a couple commercials. However, we can't list the clients beforehand. Sure. But um, we are also we are also in a couple meetings for two more two, two more feature two, films. Yeah, two feature films. And um, also a short film. It's a short film cooking. Oh right, right. Film. We've got we've got a few webisodes coming up as well, comedy and and cooking. Uh, have you had many celebrities? In your, have you had any celebrities in your movies at all? Um, we had um, I forget her name. Lois Smith. Lois Smith. Oh yeah. Um, she's a, she's not related, but she she was really big back in the day, and she was she was in a Tom Cruise movie. I forget the name of the movie, but she's she's been great. Okay. Good stuff. And we're we're working on uh, Anthony Bourdain for um, for our upcoming cooking show. Oh, nice one! Is that going to be oh, on? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 right, so is it going to be on cable TV at all, or what channel will that be on? Is that going to be on? Where can people watch? Uh, it? That one, I'm not sure yet. Um, we're working with another company on getting distribution. So once that that, that deal is signed, we'll we'll be able to what, disclose what, uh, more. What name is that? What's the name of that show? That new show, cooking show. It's uh, it's been changing names a lot. Actually, we can't oh. remember off the top of our head, but we've been getting, um, we've been getting revised scripts pretty much every day. Oh, okay. Um, about yeah. so it's been changing a lot. All right, cool. All right, good stuff. Now, Mark, where can I get hold of you if they have, have any more questions for you or anything like that? Are you, are you guys on Twitter and stuff? And yes, we are definitely on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is Afid Pro. Okay. Um, as with pretty much any other form of social media is Afid Pro or Afid Productions and um, our website is afidproductions.com if you want to check out trailers or our projects and we also have a production blog that is dedicated to um, freelance filmmakers that basically um, is made to ease their lives on, on and off set because freelancing can be quite a difficult journey once you're entering that world. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, do you do you, do you, uh, you and Mark? Um, does Mark and Samantha want to hang around? Do you, you guys want to hang around for a while? Sure. Yeah. Cool. All right. Good stuff. All right, Andrew. Um, 
Uh, what's your favorite uh, Australian movie, Andrew, at the moment, mate? Oh, gee, it's, that's, a, that's a good question. There, there, there have been a lot. I don't know that I have a favorite one at the moment, but um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to watching Candy Apple. Yeah. And uh, it, it just seems to have a real edge of confidence just looking at, at what I've seen. Um, and it could be could be really interesting. And it's, yeah. I've, I've always had this aspect where I don't mind if I don't like something, if I'm trying something new um, and I'm sort of putting myself in a different genre than I, I, I usually would. So uh, that's candyapplethemovie.com, by the way. So be sure to check that out. And um, yeah, I'll be, be really interested. And to be honest, Brad, I haven't actually been to the, to the movies for quite a while. Yeah, so it's, it's something I want to do a little bit over Christmas. Uh, yeah, same. I, I want to go up to that new uh, Helzo versus Pizza, Fat Pizza, that new movie. Yeah, yeah, that's an awesome one. So um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we'll do that. Brad, we'll head down and get back. some popcorn. Do you know that? Day. Do you know that? Do you know? Do you know that movie, Paul? Yeah, <laughs> bring him back that pizza. I can't yeah. believe. Yeah, it's gonna be funny, eh? Hey? Oh, oh like goodness! It. Funny. Goodness uh, gracious! What about what about you, Mike Elgin? Have you got any favourite movies you like watching at all, mate? Well, you asked about Australian movies. I saw yeah. a really good Australian movie recently called The Rover. Okay. With Guy Pearce. Really great movie. Like all great Australian movies, it was a lot like Mad Max. Yep. Kind of an end of the world scenario where everything is, you know, the social structure of everything is broken down. And Guy Pierce just goes on a crazy sort of like a uh, road trip of revenge and violence. And it's fantastic. Sorry about that. Jody's trying to ring me on my phone during a podcast. Oops. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Don't um, ring me. Just wants to chit chat. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again, Mark and Samantha, and we really look forward to, to Candy Apple. And I think we'll switch over now to Jennifer and listen to what the news of the yeah. week has been. Okay, let's play this and uh, we'll come back. Yep. In the Tech Webcast news, coming from TechCrunch.com, Amazon's web services announced a new service today called Lambda, which is a stateless event-driven compute service for dynamic applications that doesn't require provisioning of any compute uh, infrastructure. As Amazon's web services CTO, Werner Vogels, pointed out, this will actually enable programmers to reduce their overall development effort. You simply write the code and define the event triggers, and it will run for you automatically when the conditions are met. This, this automation will save you some time and money because instead of running the whole stack for something that would run infrequently, now you can run it without any resources, and it runs automatically. Lambda will take care of managing, scaling, and monitoring for you milliseconds after after an event is triggered, it's processed through stateless cloud functions, and thousands of these events can run in parallel. Now, there is a free tier for the service for you to try out, which offers 1 million free requests per month and up to 3.2 million seconds of com uh, compute time per month. And there are also paid tiers for you as well. Also in the news, coming from the nextweb.com, Facebook has actually quietly launched a new places directory giving Yelp a run for their money. And it's going to let you search the best destinations in cities across the world. Once you've searched for a specific city or town, you can select from restaurants, hotels, bars, cafes, attractions, arts and entertainment, gyms, cinemas, schools, universities, theaters, supermarkets, and landmarks. The results of your search are ranked by user ratings and show comments from friends and others in the Facebook network. And the new places directory will tap into, or actually does tap into, the in, uh, graph search, into graph search, infograph search, my bad, and uh, the pages location API and other elements of the Facebook platform. So it's not going to replace your local search and travel sites just yet, but there's a huge benefit on tapping into what your friends, uh, what those trusted reviews and comments from your friends are. In other news, coming from the nextweb.com, on Twitter's recent analyst call, they uh, the company sur uh, shared its plans on changes coming to the timeline here in the near future. 
So the first thing to note are timeline highlights. Twitter will be adding a section called while you were away to the top of the timeline for when you haven't viewed Twitter in a while. It's unclear if this change is going to be appearing at the top of the timeline all the time when you, when you first return to the app or if it will be there after a longer break. So more to come on that. Also, they announced some breaking news alerts. Uh, they will be adding location-based news and events to your feed, automatically sharing news that is relevant to you in a timely manner. Additionally, the company is working on making it easier to find tweets around specific locations and businesses. So you'll be able to make tweets with precise location in the near future, kind of like checking into locations on Foursquare, and then you'll be able to view tweets and images from around that business. They also are making some changes to direct messages just next week. So we have that to look forward to. And the first of these will be the ability to share tweets privately via direct message. They're also launching an instant timeline that shows new users a timeline without them having to go and sign up and follow a whole bunch of other people. So they'll see an instant timeline in their news feed. And they have stolen something from Zarfo. Andrew, I'm sorry. They stole your ID. idea. Twitter is now going to be adding some native video, allowing for video editing and sharing from uh, the tweets within the first half of next year. In other news, coming from TheVerge.com, at a recent enterprise event in San Francisco, BlackBerry announced a partnership that will offer a new level of security to Android phones. This will be launching early next year, and the program will integrate BlackBerry's end-to-end -end encryption system into Samsung's Knox system, which will add new encryption standards and support to the program. It is a clear upgrade for Samsung, as BlackBerry is well-known in the enterprise circles for having the, so, some of the best security practices in the mobile marketplace. The new program will also add features to deal with the unique challenges of security on Android, including specific mechanisms to protect data against onboard malware. Another story coming from Neowin.net, talking about Cortana. Now, could it actually launch on other operating systems? Well, Microsoft is saying, yeah, it could. Microsoft's digital personal assistant Cortana launched with the arrival of Windows Phone 8.1 and will soon be available in Windows 10, too. But as Microsoft makes more of its services and products available on other platforms, there has been much speculation over whether Cortana might make its way to iOS and Android and a possibility that has uh, been previously paid down, played down by Microsoft. It seems that it might only be a matter of time, though, before they actually free Cortana to extend her reach to other platforms beyond the Windows ecosystem. According to Business Insider, uh, Microsoft held a meeting with a small group of journalists and analysts last week and asked that which... Yeah, company's chief experience officer, Julie Larson Green, spoke about Cortana and how the assistant could be used for multiple tasks. And she was asked if that meant that Cortana could actually be available to be used on other operating systems. And what she said, the short answer is yeah. She did not elaborate further, but we have something to possibly look forward to. And the last story in the news today coming from iMore.com, talking about the Apple's continuity call feature. Now, continuity is a call relay that lets you answer a phone call from your iPhone on your iPad, your iPod Touch, or your Mac. It is awesome for when an important call comes in and your iPhone is just out of reach, but it's not so great when you have three or four iPads, iPods, and Macs around you when a call comes in and then they all start to ring and ring and ring. All at once, I have that same issue. So luckily, if you don't want your iPad or a Mac to ring, you can easily turn call relay off. You just need to know where to look. It's simple. On your iPad or iPod Touch, just launch settings and tap on FaceTime and turn off the option for iPhone cellular calls. To turn it off on your Mac, simply double tap or double click rather the FaceTime icon on your Mac dock. Click on the FaceTime in the menu bar. I'll click on Preferences and uncheck the box labeled iPhone Cellular Calls. And that is the news, Brad. Great stuff, Jennifer. Um, yeah, that, that Twitter news story about the video is interesting. Yeah, I, I just thought that was a direct ripoff from Mr. Uh, Andrew Cunningham and so, Zarfo. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> doing, uh, it's uh, it's always hard when you, you're trying to create a startup in Australia on the other side of the world with zero budget. It doesn't matter if you have some concept and some idea on what you want to execute. You... Uh, coming up against 
the big players unless you get the kind of support from venture capital um, an industry that you want it's it's very hard near on impossible to to get near it yeah yeah definitely um jennifer are they doing an actual a rewind video at all or they, what how is that going to be what's going to happen with the video with the video, I, you know, it just said that uh, from what I have read that it, they'll just be able to to capture video. I think you can edit it and then send it in a tweet oh, wow. on the fly. Jeez, okay, mm-hmm. all right, okay, interesting. It's interesting too with Twitter with um, the the timeline kind of thing coming soon. I've always thought one of the powers of Twitter was when something is breaking, you can go to Twitter and it's it's just got a real time stream of, of exactly what's happening. If they're going to create a timeline, and I know it's probably an option where you can click on it, I don't know if that's what Twitter's power is. Twitter's forte is it? I mean, it just feels a bit like let you know, it, it's kind of a one out of Facebook's, um, you know. Yeah, run. it does. It reminds me of the Facebook. I agree, it does. But, but you know, I kind of like it though because I don't look at Twitter that often, and a lot of times I'll. I'll have friends that maybe they follow a handful of people and I'm one of them and they'll see all of my tweets. But then for me, I follow so many and I don't really use my list too well, you know, so yeah. I'll miss a lot of things. And I would love to kind of see maybe a section of highlight, even with, with my friend's data, like while you were away, Andrew tweeted this, mm. Brad tweeted that or, you know, something like that. Yeah, I, I always have Twitter open every day. It's good to have Twitter open. I like it. Yeah. Um, I think I think, should just, I think if I can jump in there about about yeah, Twitter they, and, and being becoming more like Facebook, the problem is that Facebook has always been. Uh, I mean, the way I look at it is that there's mediated stuff and there's unmediated stuff. So, RSS would be a perfect example of unmediated content where basically the user picks what they want to see and they see everything they picked, and mm-hmm. that's why Google got rid of Google Reader because it's unmediated. There's nothing you can do with that. Other than they put some dumb display ad up there, but with mediated content like Facebook, like Google Plus, and like what Twitter's trying to get to, they have mediated content where algorithms decide what you see. And in order for them to decide what you see, they have to know all about you. They want your location, they want your age, they want your gender, they want your interests, they want to know who you know, they want to know what celebrities you follow, they want to know what music you listen to. And so all of these so called features that enable you to customize things for you, enables them to know who you are so they can serve up ads that are just for you and that you're more likely to click on those ads and buy those products and therefore the ads can uh, bring in a lot more money. And that's why they're becoming more like Facebook. There's no money in unmediated Twitter where people just pick, choose to follow 30 people and just get everything those people follow. What they really want to do is uh, find out more information, give you customized information and also customized advertising. Ah, so that's the ticket. That's the very good. Mike, very good. <laughs> that's the sense. wonder of having Mike Elgin it on the big. show. So it's interesting. It Twitter, well, uh, I mean, they're problem? probably looking at monetizing, and, and you know, I mean, they do some monetizing as it is, but maybe they're getting a lot more pressure um, from corporate and shareholders to, as as you've sort of said, Mike, you know, go through and make a few more dollars out of advertising. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Mike, do you have any more uh, opinions on them stories, mate? Uh, yeah, just, um, so the first thing is, um, you know, this Twitter stuff is, is really interesting. Um, they, they, they really in this weird position that, that all this information came from an analyst call, the first one that they've done since they've gone public and they threw out all kinds of crazy numbers that we hadn't, you know, that hadn't been disclosed before. And one of them that there's a huge number of people who they say, go to Twitter every day. I think it was a million and or 150 million or some 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 number like that who go to Twitter with some frequency without logging in. And so one of the things that they're trying to do is to get those people to log in. They are, they're implying that those people are non for the most part they're non members who if they could get them to actually sign up and then they could get them into the monetization treadmill, uh, that would be something that that investors would want them to do. My problem with that information is they don't know who those users are. I'm sure that many of those people are users who just aren't logging in, and therefore yeah. getting them to log in is, isn't a huge deal. And and the other thing is that they throw around numbers about um, about active users and people are signed up and number of accounts and all those kinds of things. And they don't know who those people are either. I bet you that most of us have more than one account, and it's not really clear if they're counting those multiple accounts as multiple people, which wouldn't be accurate. I have about six or seven accounts. I'm not six or seven people. I'm just one person. And so it's really, um, 
that they're they're really in the struggle with their now that they're public with trying to convince investors that they have lots of really engaged users that can be monetized and it's really they're trying to throw around all these numbers but the more they talk the kind of more confusing it becomes yeah, and that makes sense and I do I have multiple accounts too I must have around four or five different accounts and, or maybe more than that and and the same thing goes with me too if I click on a link or a, li- a Twitter link and I'm not logged in I don't want to I'm like oh gosh I have to do two factor and so I just don't bother logging in sometimes you know so the same thing you know so I'm sure a lot of those people that are clicking the links probably do have accounts but they're not signed into them yeah mm. That's a good point. all right uh, Steve or Paul do you have a, any opinion on them stories at all mate at all? Um, I do uh, on, on a few of them, uh, like Cortana. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, on Cortana, it's um, technically it's it's it should be fairly easy for them to use it for any platform. Uh, concerning, I'm guessing it's going to be very much like Apple with their um, the the bulk of the processing is going to be d- done by a server, so it should be fairly easy to program a, a front end um, for. Android, iOS, and Windows. So, you know, as an uh, app uh, type thing and then integrate it that way, uh, it should be fairly easy. You know, one thing I'm wondering about Cortana, maybe somebody on the call or on the show can answer this to me. Why do we want Cortana on iOS or Android? I mean, with Android, we have Google Now. And I, I love that. I think that works great. But what, what makes Cortana unique that we would want it elsewhere to well, replace Siri? Yeah, one of the things that's unique about Cortana is something called the notebook. So it's very transparent about what it knows about you. So, for example, you know, you can go into Siri or Google Now and you can learn who you are and where, where, where your home address is and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and it's on both of those platforms, it's it's not super clear and obvious what exactly it knows and what it what you want it to know. On Cortana, it's super clear. This notebook has this whole list of things. It's like, okay, what is your name? What do you want me to call you? What is your spouse's name? What are your kids' name? Where do you, is your home address? Where what sort of teams do you like? What and it's all just right there in this notebook. And you can go in and edit it and and customize it and say, you know, I don't want you to know my phone number. I don't want you to know this or that. And I do want you to know this, that, and the other thing. And so it's it's the most transparent uh, and user controllable virtual assistant uh, that's out there. And that is, that's kind of nice. It's also nice. You know, there are some people who uh, maybe they, they use an iPhone uh, as their phone, but they use windows as their computer, you know, their computer. And mm-hmm. they may be using, you know, Cortana is going to end up on the desktop for sure. And they just want one. They may just prefer Cortana because they're using it heavily all day. And, it, and Cortana really gets to know them really well. And they want to extend that to their phone in their personal life when they're away from their desk. So I think there are good reasons. I think all of the major virtual assistant platforms are have benefits and, and downsides. And certainly, you know, it looks like Cortana is actually, you know, pretty cool. Yeah, that's good. I, I didn't mm-hmm. realize that at all. Now, I wonder, is, do we know what Amazon Echo is using, what they're using for their virtual I guess they're just calling it Alexa, right? Is that correct? I'm not as far as we can tell, it's called Alexa, <laughs> and that's something obviously that can be extended to other devices. I doubt Amazon will ever extend it beyond Amazon devices, but it could be extended to all their Amazon devices, including the, their ebook readers, their TV, uh, et cetera. But yeah, as far as we, you know, we don't know anything about it. They're selling Echo as as an integrated product, but really Echo is just a speaker and a microphone and an internet connection for this Cortana-like Siri live virtual assistant called Alexa. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm. I don't. Yeah, I, I actually might. I I might be the only one who might get one. I don't know because everyone thinks it's creepy, but yeah. you know. Yeah, ninety nine bucks, man. Yeah. It's pretty cheap, and, yeah, and it's not bad. Yeah, and and really, Alexa is the future because, um, I think what where we're gonna he- where we're headed is the world of Star Trek, where basically you don't even think about what device you're talking to you just talk to the room whether you're in the car whether you're in the living room bedroom bathroom kitchen in your office or whatever you just want to speak up say the magic word and then issue a command and That's then it. information comes back at you and so this idea of, of of right now it's mostly a phone thing it's gradually becoming a phone and pc thing and a tablet thing but really that's going to look that's going to look really old-fashioned when we have these uh echo like devices in every room and office and car and that's really the that's really the use case. You don't touch any 
thing. You don't even know where the microphone or speakers are. You just talk and the information comes back at you. Yeah. I, I think it's wonderful. Kind of like Tony Stark or, or like you said, Star Trek with computer, you know, computer. What I don't know. Look this up it's for perfectly here, inevitable. You know? yeah. It's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's it's love still it. it's yeah. still kind of glitchy at times, and well, this is not real. I uh, I don't necessarily use my mobile phone for GPS, but uh, I do got one of the latest uh, Garmin, which is uh, a new touch device, and it does use voice recognition. And I was saying Art Center, and it was like doing cart system, or you know, it was trying to search for something totally different. I don't. Know, do you think um, it, that's advanced enough for word recognition to? Um, to be able to recognize, you know, you want the first time, because uh, sometimes I end up having to type things in. Of course, it is a Garmin. It's different from some of the mobile platforms, obviously, but anyone? Um, are you asking me? Oh, it could be anyone. It could be you or um, uh, do, do, uh, do you, you know, for instance, well, Siri or some of the other ones, you try to say something and it often gets the the wording wrong is it you know is it advanced enough to be able to do that yeah. well a couple of, of things uh, a couple of points on that first of all it's pretty good already it's probably i don't know i don't know what the actual numbers are 80 90 percent i think it depends on what your accent is like none of them can understand people who are in scotland or whatever yeah uh but but what's gonna you know two things it's just gonna get better it's never gonna get worse it's just gonna get better and better and the, the other thing is that one of the reasons it's gonna get better is through machine learning so over time just using it uh, individually, it'll get to know you personally and also everybody using it constantly and then it monitoring what you do afterwards that indicates whether they blew it or they got it right will will improve it as well. So there's there's a there's an ongoing process of applying sort of self learning to to these uh, speech recognition algorithms. And uh, again, but no matter what, it's just going to get better and better. It's already on the borderline of being good enough. And a year from now, it'll be better than that. And three years, four years from now, yeah, it's going to be definitely good enough. All right. Yeah, I, I, I really I really enjoy Siri. Siri works great on my phone. I use it all the time. Um, do you use Siri at all, Mark? How do you like Siri? Uh, yeah, I love it. I, I use Siri uh, all the time. I also use Google Now. I use... Uh, Google Now on my Mac, and um, I use Google Now on my iPhone and also my Android phone. But I, I like Siri a lot. Siri has gotten way better, and it, it just it's more solid. Like it, it's its recognition has gotten so good that it's I, I'm I think I'm hitting like ninety ninety eight percent these days. It's just really good. All right, Paul, any questions? Any views on, on them stories, mate? Uh, yeah, with the voice recognition stuff, um, yeah, I, I think now uh, on an everyday basis, I'm getting more and more into using the voice recognition, especially now I've got the um, those um, Android Wear type watches. Okay. Um, so I find myself, even if my phone's not around, I will <laughs> talk to my watch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I found myself getting so used to it at some point that I was in an elevator once and I... Uh, <laughs> Responded to a text by saying, um, "Okay, Google, yes," <laughs> and they were all, and everyone in the elevator just looked at me. <laughs> um, really funny. Um, and when they started asking questions about what type of watch that was, <laughs> and um, yeah, I had, I've missed my floor a few times trying to get out the elevator. Um, but yeah, I I find it very um, useful the whole concept of the voice recognition. So. Yeah, to have that ability to have anywhere at any time is definitely a, a good thing, um, especially if you can get any type of information, no matter what um, command you say or how you say it, it doesn't really matter in, in a lot of ways. Definitely. And how, how are you enjoying your new uh, iPhone 6 Plus or whatever it is, 6 Plus, 6 or 6, iPhone 6? Uh, 6 Plus? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's <coughs> good. Um, still, still runs well. Um, cool. Nice big screen. Yep. <laughs> Uh, what, do you, what do you use your iPad for mainly these days? Uh, mostly stuff that I need to do, like um, I'll remote into um, a number of PCs or um, Macs using my iPad. Um, I'll log. I'll, basically, I'll, I'll use it. I use it more the tablet 
because it's more convenient than I would actually go up to a computer and physically do it. Um, because it's just, well, to have that tablet with me and to have all that stuff at pretty much my fingertips is um, more convenient, more quicker to do for me yeah. in general. Yeah, um, so, yeah, most of the time, I'm pretty much, 80% of the time, I'll use my um, iPad more so than any of the computers in the house. Um, well, the computers in the house are solely used just for um, video editing and development. That's basically it. Cool, <laughs> I don't really do anything like watching YouTube what or about anything Apple like TV? that on my computer. Do you have an Apple TV? Sorry? Do you, do you have an Apple yeah, TV? Yeah, I have that. Um, I use that primarily just for movies and TV shows. Um, that's pretty much about it. Okay. Um, I will so occasionally use AirPlay, but um, you know, there's still a little bit of um, still a little bit of lag if you want to play say a game on your yeah. big TV with um, AirPlay and it's, it's still quicker to obviously hook it up via HDMI directly to the TV um, to get that better um, yeah. uh, response time. Yeah, personally, uh, but it's I getting love, better. Yeah, I love AirPlay. AirPlay works great for me. Um, but yeah, it's good. Uh, Jake, what about you, mate? What's your view on them stories and how's that new gadget you got today? Oh, the gadget's pretty good. Give us a quick I've rundown hooked, on it. What, it is, what is it? And what's it called? It's called the Legion Meter. Okay. Don't get don't get confused with the brain lesion. It's true, because they have the same name. Oh, well. So basically, so basically, in a way, this device helps your iPod, your, any Apple device or Android device charge much faster. Okay, like yeah. 90, that's cool. Yeah, so, so you, you plug it into your device and then you just plug your device into it. So you yep. plug that into your laptop and then you plug the device yep. in and it, it's, it boosts the charge. Yeah, it does. Cycle. It, it even has a Apple mode for, a, nice. for the iPhone and iPad. So apparently it charges faster. Yeah. That's great. That's that actually charges my cool. iPad in, in less time. It, instead of taking a yeah. couple hours, it took half the time. I think, yeah. I think I've seen a uh, Nexus waiting. commercial. Waiting on That's great. Yeah, I'm still waiting on mine from uh, the, the um, where'd you get it from, Jacob? I forgot the name. PLX. That's it. That's it. That, that was a um, a startup. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Andrew, what about you, oh. mate? Would you you got into Netflix, mate, the other day? Yeah, I did, Brad. Um, so I'm on the Netflix, <laughs> uh, running out of the US version. Yep. Don't tell anybody. Oh. And uh, it, it's really good. We've been enjoying it. Uh, as you said, Brad, though, I mean, the content is a bit older. So yep. you're watching things that, you know, the first thing Chris said to me was, let's watch you know, um, the future in our stars. I'm like, yeah, that came out a few months ago, so that's not going to be there. So she's like, oh. But then we started flicking through them and watched a couple of classic movies and things like that. And there's so many TV shows that we just haven't watched yeah and um with a six month old in the house you know he effectively chooses when we get to watch tv and when we don't so it's not yeah. like at you know 7 30 or 8 30 at night we can sort of sit down and watch the show so um mm -hmm. it'll be really good working through did you go for, a bunch of the big you, shows go ahead paul uh did you go through all the old all the old tv shows like um MacGyver? <laughs> <laughs> we, we haven't watched them yet, Paul, but yeah, we did. We saw, we were like, oh my God, it's got MacGyver. And then it's like, oh my God, it's got Magnum PI. And so yeah. you have these instant things of, I'm going to watch the whole thing. And it even had um, Knight Rider. I mean, is there a cool oh, yeah. show than Knight Rider? Yeah, and yeah. So, but as soon as you watched, I said to Christy, once you we watched like the first five or ten minutes of one, I bet we'll just be like, "Ugh, this sucks." You know, I wonder how well some of those old shows kind of translate into today. Mm, mm. Yeah. Well, I checked out Netflix the other day, Andrew, for like ten minutes, man. I got, I got bored of it. There was not one show on there I didn't want to find to watch. You've Dude. probably already seen a lot of content, I have. Um, I have right? You're a bit of a TV, TV a phobe, so you've probably seen. Just about everything that's going around. So um, yeah, I have, mate. Yeah, and uh, hard please, as far as that's concerned, oh, you need the latest, yeah. greatest. Well, I use Fox, though, mate. So you're not getting on there. Well, on some of the yeah, the, that's true. That's true. On some of the Netflix, um, you'll find too. Sometimes you can find these real uh, good gyms that they're like, they they only lasted for a season or two, but they were actually great series. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can find uh, little things like that that really make it great. Um, I mean, you got to search and, and and try new things. 
on Netflix. And look, yep. for, for us over here, Steve, a lot of those little gems, we never even got them in yeah, Australia. Yeah, so that's true. Well, there's a lot about, of yeah. things where I'm anticipating Google searching some of the ones I've never heard of and just seeing what people are saying and see if I can find a few gems like that. What is your favorite TV show at the moment, Andrew? What do you like watching, mate? Look, I don't really watch that much, but I, I do enjoy um, 24 when it was on, and they just had a, a repeat, a, a reprise, I think, a 12, month, 12 episode, so I'm about halfway through the, the new ones. But I, I saw up to Series 3 of Breaking Bad. I'm about halfway through Series 3. Okay. Um, so I'm really looking forward to watching the last couple of series of that, and Christy and I watched the pilot the other night, um, so I'm trying to get her into it, and obviously Game of Thrones. I think oh, yeah. about series two um, or something of how that. Do you like so it? yeah, it's, how do you like that, that, How do you like Game Game of Thrones so far? I, I really like it because it's it's so far removed from reality. Sometimes yeah. you just want to step away to sort of a, a dream world. Um, it's it's kind of funny. Everyone teases the geeky kids who you know um, have these big swords and you know they've got this role playing and they're doing all this stuff and they've got these cards and you know Holgor did this and everyone's like oh what an idiot what a geek but then this TV show comes out it does exactly that and we're all into it and it's all the rage yeah. so how does yeah. that work I don't know <laughs> yeah um, oh. Jennifer what about Sons of Anarchy hey. I mentioned last week I forgot to mention this to you last week what about Sons of Anarchy you've been getting into that I know you have I have too I have been I, I, I love it I love it It's uh, it's been a fantastic series I hate to see it go yes. I, I have a couple more comments on the news story yeah, go ahead yeah. yep. is that alright yep. okay uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Blackberry partnering up uh, and offering the security to Android so I think that's really unique because that's you know the number one thing about Blackberry right right is security and you know I know a lot of lawyers and people that are in the government that actually still carry the BlackBerry devices so I think it's kind of cool to see them using that technology and bringing it to Knox and and really securing up uh, Samsung's devices a little bit further and I'm wondering if you know so they'll build this into Knox but I'm wondering if they're going to do anything further with other Android devices you know like for example I use an LG and Hopefully, I'll get a Motorola here soon and, you know, and to see what's built into that rather than just Samsung. Uh, I'm curious, Mike, have you heard anything further on that regarding uh, the security with Knox and BlackBerry? No, I haven't. Um, I'm just, just uh, I do want to clarify for people who may not be familiar with Knox. Knox is actually a really cool I'm idea really from Samsung that it basically lets you have a personal phone and a work phone all on the same phone. So basically, you throw a switch. And all of a sudden, your your existing phone, your Android phone from Samsung, becomes a personal phone. And then you throw the switch back, and now it's a highly secure, supposedly, uh, work phone. Their security has been challenged lately, and that's why the BlackBerry encryption thing is such a, a welcome thing. But in terms of BlackBerry, I really think that BlackBerry is kind of in the same boat as Microsoft. And what I mean by that is they formerly dominant. Now they're, you know, in the case of Microsoft, they're future dominance is in question in the case of blackberry the future existence is in question and so mm -hmm. the the smart move is to go radically cross-platform microsoft's already doing that blackberry's starting to do it and if they're smart and i think they I are see. they'll continue to do this kind of stuff and they'll become this platform with great technology for everybody instead of saying having doing what apple does which is saying yeah we have great technology and it's only for our hardware software services bundle and mm -hmm. so I think I, I would expect lots more of this kind of thing from BlackBerry. I hope so. I think that's a, a, a bright outlook at that. Yeah, I, I really hope because I'd love to see the security on other devices, not just Samsung as well, you know, especially for in the world of Android. I think we, we truly need it. So uh, I'm excited about that. And, and definitely. And the, the, yeah, yeah. Did, did anyone else want to say something on that? And then the other thing I, I found kind of cool was Facebook launching their places. And I thought that was already in place, but maybe this is an official launch because if you go to, I think it's facebook.com slash places, uh, and then it shows you the restaurants and just all the things in the, in the city that you are. You can select a city. I found that pretty cool, but the one thing I'm playing around with it right now is I don't see where I can necessarily put an address in and see, you know, it's just showing me the, the restaurants that are near 
they're right where I am, but it doesn't show me like per se exactly like within a few miles of me or so I don't. So I guess maybe they'll tweak it a little bit more. But I think that's kind of cool. Is that, that, they, the, that, uh, mobile, that Is that also on the mobile as well, Jen? Or just yeah. the I you know that's a good question. I would assume so, but I haven't. I didn't launch it on the mobile, so okay. I, I I would think it would be okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, Andrew. If, if I could throw a little bit of, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, if ahead. I could throw a little bit of ice water on the Facebook Places thing, uh, a couple of things about this that really bug me a lot. One of them is the fact that this whole thing about like your friends are going to, um, you're, you're going to get advice from your family and friends about mm -hmm. things over the advice of the larger crowd. So like over Yelp or over other, other crowd source, sources of information. This is a terrible idea. Like my, my, my extended family are not like super great at knowing exactly what coffee shops I want to go to. You know, maybe they like Denny's or something. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the other thing is that, that people are scattered all over the place and don't really have enough contact to do any proper crowdsourcing. So, for example, I probably have, in terms of people I actually know on Facebook, I, it's probably, I don't know, 100 people, 150 people, if you include old high school friends, family, you know, maybe 200 and then I have like 800 people who are just kind of followers of mine who I don't know who they are, where they live. They live internationally. And it's like that's none of them live in. Well, maybe five or six people live in the town that I live in. So when I go searching for a restaurant in my town, they have that my group of Facebook family and friends have nothing to say about that. Like at all. The other thing that bugs me is that Facebook still doesn't have regular search. You still can't search Facebook for things people have posted. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? You can't search Facebook right. for, for a, a, you know, the word iPhone to see who on Apple, who on Facebook has bought an iPhone because they won't return anything. No, you're it's right. right. It's, it's like you can't search that. Facebook. Yeah. No, yeah, you, you can't. When I do that right now, it's going to pull up. Yeah, it pulls up the pages instead. You can right. There's no way you can, you can do it. You're right. That's crazy. Mm. Yeah, so, so, no, those so are I'm trying to replace Yelp. Which you'll never be able to do. Just give me search. <laughs> give me regular, yeah. regular search. Yeah. That that's what they need. That's a great point. And you're right. You know, and I was just kind of looking into seeing what friends you know like these restaurants and and there's another thing. What kind of data are they getting? They're they're, they're just going on Facebook likes. And I very rarely will go to personally. I, I very rarely will go to a a restaurant on Facebook and rate it. I'll do it on Yelp. But I don't rate restaurants on Facebook, you know, so I don't know how many people that actually do that. Yeah, definitely. Andrew, over to you, mate. Yeah, it's a tough one with the, the Facebook Yelp stuff. I think um, I, I love the idea of Yelp and what it does, but ultimately Facebook can push their power around because they've got the money and they've got the users. So if they decide to go into something, it's, you know, they, they've got an instant advantage from day one. I think a lot of people, or a lot of the younger audiences, really do like this idea of segmented products. You know, I do this product, I have this app to do this, I have this app to do this, I have this app to do this. So I don't know if it's going to work for Facebook, but um, it just might. You know, they, they have all of the businesses on there, so they've got an instant advantage. But um, hopefully people continue to use Yelp because it's a good system. Yeah, definitely. Is Yelp... Do you is Yelp, Yelp in Australia? Yeah, it is. It is. I was just about to ask you. Yeah, is Yelp app on your phone at all, mate? Look, I'm one of these passive users of Yelp. I, I don't log in and go, oh, I'm going to use Yelp. But if I if I want to go out for dinner or if I'm somewhere and there's a restaurant across the road and someone's like, hey, man, come down here or meet me here or, or something, I, I will log in and do a, a Google. I usually just type in the restaurant name followed by the word Yelp and it will come up with it and I'll click on it and go straight to the link but oh. I don't necessarily use it by the app but I, I wonder why yeah. the day we couldn't find any eat for lunch yesterday when we were in the city the other day Andrew I wonder why we couldn't yeah that's true that's true just trying new things but we won't go back to that place again <laughs> where we Brad wasn't that great but, no well the, you know I'm not going to give it any bad um, mentions but um, the place inside it was nice inside and but I think just the uh, the food wasn't that good, but yeah. yeah, look, there weren't enough people in there. I mean, it's one of those things of, yeah. of restaurants. It it's is. one of those golden rules. If there's nobody in there, don't walk exactly. in. And that, that's exactly. exactly what we did. And unfortunately, yeah, exactly. I don't think the food was all that fresh. Um, when there's no one in there, you have to wonder about how much food they're moving through the place. And yeah. from a commercial decision, at what point do they put it in the bin if it's you know um, going off? So exactly. 
exactly. Yeah, that's, that's how it goes. Any, um, answer the question to Andrew. Have you been to many nice places in, in, in the city or Melbourne, Andrew? You- yeah, I have. I have There's okay. some really nice places in Melbourne. Um, yeah, there, there are an, a number. Blue, Bluestone uh, Restaurant Bar and Grill is really nice. That That's okay. one of my favourites. Um, yeah, there's there's a number of really good ones in there. There's there's a number of great steakhouses and restaurants, a number of really yes. good restaurants in and around Crown Casino. But it's one of those things where I, you don't do it all the time because it is quite expensive. I you know, if you want to pay 50 bucks for a steak and then get some <laughs> trimmings and a bottle of wine as well, it, it comes out expensive <laughs> if you... Yeah, you know. exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. What about you, Mark? Have you eaten any, any many good restaurants at all? Uh, absolutely. I, I uh, go nuts with it. Cool. Good stuff. I actually just had a really fun culinary adventure recently. I went to Georgia. You're actually breaking up at the moment. Um, what about you, Jen? Just real quick, do you go to many food places to eat or many restaurants? Yeah. You know, we yeah. You know, there's there's a handful of. I, I live in a town called Greensboro, North Carolina. I call it Greens boring North Carolina. It's it's all right. It's there's not that many great restaurants over here. But you know, when I go and you know, I travel, then I definitely try to hit up a restaurant, and I always turn to Yelp to help okay. me find. It. And I look for those local reviews. You okay. know, those just uh, yeah, just try to find a unique place that the locals go to. Okay, well, I might have to put the Yelp Yelp app back in my phone then to check that out. Uh, and Jacob, what about you, mate? Uh, you've got a, something you want to say? Well, what I was saying, they had a, a place out here that was okay, but the place that replaced it is called the Copper Monkey. Oh, yeah. They, they do the best wings. They do? You don't, they do, you don't want it hot? Right. They don't do it. They do it naked. I reckon the best place I've been to in Melbourne is that... Uh, is, that, is it is it the, that barbecue place Andrew went to um, that make chickens? You know that barbecue place we went to. I think so. That's probably so. Yeah, there's yeah, there's some good places around town, but um, there is. Indeed. You know, I think we'll we'll wrap it up. That that's a good show today, guys, and it's been fantastic to um, chat about the new movie uh, coming out, Candy Apple, yep. and that's Candy Apple the movie dot com. Yep. Um, with Mark and Samantha, and it's great yep. to have Mike Elgin on again Definitely. as well and um, obviously also it's been um, fantastic to yeah really run through stuff and have you on as well Paul Kerry. Yeah good on you Paul good to have you on mate. Nice. We're going to get hold of you and give a quick brief on the uh, app update too mate for the tech web guys. Mm. Uh, yeah I was still working on the live portion of it so basically so when you send out notification you'll be able to actually listen or view live uh, the podcast um, so obviously I'm still um, Working out how what service we can actually put in there that you want to use, um, and um, once I once I put that in, um, I'll put out another beta, and um, you can test her out and see how it goes in during the show, maybe. All right, definitely it sounds good. Sounds good. What about you, Steve? What's your final view of the show, and do you eat out much at all, mate? Um, yeah, I uh, like the show. Uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I do. Uh, there's some local restaurants. Uh, here in Portland, uh, Hudat's really good, and uh, which is a Vietnamese restaurant. Uh, they serve Chinese food too. Yep. Um, we recently had a Applebee's open up, and um, but the service is the food was pretty good, but the service wasn't great. But then again, they're a, a brand new restaurant, and I, uh, I understand people um, just quit at the last minute. So bringing in a new uh, restaurant and everything and in a couple of months, I think it should be up to par. So. And it's interesting too when when there's a new restaurant. I guess you have to try and allow the time, as you said, for the service for everyone in that to start to work like a well-oiled machine, and everyone to learn each other's mechanisms and personalities and the way that they operate. I don't think we do that enough um, for new enterprises, but that that is something I think that really matters. All right, let's go to Mike Elgin real quick. Um, thanks for being on, Mike. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm in a kind of a noisy place right now. I'm no trying problem. to get to a, no a quieter place. Can you have a quick uh, question for Mark before we wrap up? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, I think Andrew's got a quick question for you. Go ahead, Andrew. You have a quick question? Okay, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to um, ask uh, where we can contact you, and um, thank you for being on the show. Where's well, the thank best you place very to much. find you, Twitter or Facebook? or? Google Plus. Google, Google Plus. Plus. Is, okay. uh, Google Plus. 
Yeah, just uh, search for me on Google Plus. You can just go to Elgin E L G A N dot com, and that will uh, redirect to my Google Plus profile. And also, you can catch him on, on the uh, network too. On the network. Yep, um, I have a daily web ca- uh, tech uh, podcast called Tech News Today. Cool. And you can find that at twitch.tv slash TNT. Oh, good one, good one. That's I fun. love, I got to say, I love Tech News Today. I listen to it Thank you daily. So much. It's, yes, same. You're welcome. You've, you, you've done a fantastic job with it, and it's, it's, I love your work. So, so thank, thank you. Thank you so for, much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yep. And uh, yeah, and th- thank you for having me on the show. No problem, Mark. Appreciate your time, mate. Uh, you can get me on Twitter at Brad Oz and Tech Webcast. Jacob, what about you, mate? Well, you can follow me at Jazzbot32669. And this was a pretty good show. All right, good stuff, mate. Andrew Cunningham, what about you, mate? Yeah, you can grab me on Twitter or Facebook as Cunning Drew. And on the Zafo app, you can get me at Andrew. Okay, and Mark and Samantha, what about you? Uh, you can catch us at affidproductions.com or twitter.com slash affidpro. Okay, and appreciate your time, Mark, for being on, mate. Thanks for being on. And uh, Thank you. Great chatting to you about what you do and uh, the movies and stuff. That's, yeah. yeah, absolutely, and we'd love to have you back on, uh, even just as a, a guest co-host when Candy Apple is officially launched and available for our listeners to um, have a look at. Absolutely, we'll keep you posted. Thanks for having us. All right, that's it, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks for that, and uh, that's another week on Tech Webcast. That's it. Tech Webcast. The hosts and guests are unsurpassed. Tech Webcast. Because technology moves so fast. Tech Webcast. Ha, stick around and you're going to have a blast. Yeah. Tech, tech, tech. Tech webcast, ha, ha. Tech, 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 tech webcast. Yes, Andrew, to Brad, Jody, Steve, and Jennifer. Boom!